Hello and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be building the rollover protection system for the 988F model. But first, before I do that, I need to remove some material from the donor model. This will allow the vertical supports for the 988F canopy to fit down into the frame. To do so, I'm using a bandsaw to slowly chip away little bits of material. This isn't the most ideal way of doing it, but it seemed to be the only tool that I had available that could create this sort of a notched system. Another option would have been to use something like a rotary tool, but I like using the bandsaw to do this because it's something that I've used in the past and have experience with it. To clean up all the jagged edges, I'll come back in with a file and make everything nice and smooth. For the rear supports, I wanted to use a three-dimensional piece. I didn't want to have to solder multiple pieces together to get a angled bend or to get the illusion of an angled bend. So I took and drew out what I expected the outside shape of the vertical supports to look like. Used a V-bit to cut in the grooves that I needed to bend from. I used a 90-degree bit to give me the right angle so that I could make a right-angled bend. I then used a machining block and a vise to bend them into shape. And then used a small lightweight hammer to help square out those bends just a little bit more. I ran into a little bit of an issue where the part that I was bending was a little too narrow to fit over the edge of the vise. So I needed to get a little bit creative and use the vise to try to press all of it together into a 90 degree angle. I needed to be careful to not warp the top of it because that would have ended up creating a not flat piece. Another problem I ran into was the groove marks that I'm using uh, to guide these bends right here. They should have been up a little bit more to allow the previously bent angles to clear, but I was able to get away with bending it kind of around that top piece of metal. Everything fit well into the deck. Looked like uh, it was going as planned, but I had a little bit of a measuring issue. So this looks like a great piece, but when I tried to drop it over the cab, I realized it was too narrow. Somewhere along the line, I goofed up my measurements and I uh, was unable to make that work. For the inner part, I cut a thicker piece of brass with the same type of bends in it to kind of fill in that inner space. Um, that one fit just fine. I decided that I would need to take the outer one and cut it in half because it's still going to fit under the canopy sheet metal itself. But um, it wasn't necessary that it was would be. It wasn't necessary to join it together, so I was able to cut it in half and make everything fit right on top of the previously bent piece. And then here it is together without the canopy over it. None of this at the top will be visible once it's created. So I decided that I wanted to mechanically attach this platform. So I glued it in place so that I can use the drill press on it without it moving around. But in the process of doing that, I glued my fingers together. If you glue your fingers together, don't panic. There's a lot of different things that you can use to get it unstuck. I know that nail polish remover is one of those. I happen to have a bottle of super glue debonder handy. It was in reach, so I used that to try to unstick my fingers. Just slowly work whatever solution you're using into the area that is affected by the super glue, and then just gently try to pry it apart. Don't try to rip or you'll tear your skin, and that's a bad place to be. But eventually, it came undone. Once I sorted the super glue fiasco out, I mounted the frame with the glued on platform into my drill press and began drilling the various holes. The drill bits that I am using here are these carbide drill bits. You can find them all over eBay and Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive, but they're pretty strong. Uh, standard like hardware drill bits are not advisable for this type of work. They just doll out way too quickly and they require too much pressure. And I find that warps the bit and then you don't get very clear holes um, or very straight holes. 
These bits are, again, pretty sharp, but I do still like to use some form of lubricant. Um, here I'm using a, a bicycle lubricant called TriFlow, but it's nice and lightweight and it doesn't get gummed up. Uh, occasionally I like to take and clear away the shavings that come up from the drill bit just to keep as much gunk out of there as I can because I find that whenever I don't lubricate when using these bits I always seem to break them and then it obviously goes without saying but use a light amount of pressure when you're drilling with these. These holes I will run pins through later and glue or solder those in place to hold this platform up. And this is the platform that the cab sits on top of. Before being able to install the rollover protection into the mounts that I made for it, I needed to take and narrow the bottom of it out just a little bit so that it would fit into the spot where it's supposed to be received. It took a little bit of adjusting, but I eventually got it to fit. And then for bending the canopy, I wanted to get a much rounder bend for the corners. If you take a look at a 988F rollover protection canopy, you'll notice that the sides of it are actually quite a round bend. The first bend that I did came out way too square, so I decided to take a small piece of brass and lay it across the top of the vise and then bend the piece down across it to create a little bit of a gap, which gave me a nice round bend. The front panel for the canopy features a little air scoop that allows the heat and air con unit that sits on top of the cap itself to get air. This is all enclosed under the canopy, um, so it's not really visible from the outside, but I wanted to add the, the bit of detail to it. And then this little plate right here features a cutout so that if you look up into the inlet, you actually see through and it doesn't just end on a plate. I used the resistance soldering iron to put it all together. In my left hand, I'm holding the probe and in my right hand, I'm holding the clip that basically transmits the electricity through the piece that I'm working on to that clip and back into the unit. The rear piece was much more simple. I chose to mount the entire assembly into the model itself. I figured this would give me my best shot at keeping everything aligned, not only with the vertical supports on the top, but keeping it aligned in perspective to the model. You can see the tip of this thing gets pretty red hot. It conducts quite a bit of electricity to get the two pieces of metal hot enough to melt the solder. When it starts smoking the flux, it melts the solder shortly after, and that's when you know you've got a good bond. And here it is complete. This piece was definitely a little bit more complex to build than I thought it would be. But that's because I was trying to get it as accurate as I could. The fit and finish on it is really nice. It matches up well with the cab. Again, all this is just kind of in place. It's not glued or soldered in yet. Well, not to the mainframe at least. It was definitely a lot of fun to build this piece. And I'm very happy with how the whole assembly and retention aspect of it went together. And you can see for something that seems to be such a simple piece, there really is a lot of detail involved in the process. Still a little bit of touch-up work to do here. I need to fill in that gap with some putty. And then I need to make that transition a little bit cleaner. I ended up having to make it a little bit wider, so I used a, another piece of brass and shimmied it in between there and there, running the entire length of this to fill it out a bit more. But that's an easy part to cover. It's very heavy too, it's got some definite girth to it. 
This front panel was interesting. I didn't realize initially that it was this complex. I thought it was just a smooth piece of metal that went straight across, but the closer I looked at the photos, the more I realized that there was actually something that poked out there. And when I got some more close-up pictures of it, I realized that it was a, an intake scoop for the HVAC unit that sits on top of the cab itself. So it's cool to have that little detail in there. And then later on, mirrors will get mounted to the side, and then lights will get installed into there. But that's it. That is the rollover protection canopy for the 988F. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.